Yes, DJI have finally done it. They have added support for the DJI O3 ear unit on the new DJI Goggles 3. Now, I'm going to try and keep this video as short and sweet as I can. I've spent the last couple of hours doing all of the usual testing that I've done. And what I'm going to try and do today is just share with you the exact situation as it is right now. I don't actually see that situation changing in the future. Everything is looking really good. No major complaints. But there are a few things that you do need to be aware of. So let's get on with it. So today, rather out the blue, DJI have released a new firmware update for the DJI Goggles 3, as well as the DJI FPV Remote Version 3 and the O3 ear unit called Version 01.03.0000. Now, this officially adds support for the O3 ear unit on the DJI Goggles 3. There are no other changes in this firmware other than the fact that it adds support for the O3 ear unit on the Goggles 3. There are really no feature changes, no new additions. It is simply an update to give support for the O3 ear unit on the Goggles 3 when used in combination with the DJI FPV Remote version 3. Now, this is all fairly straightforward. To do this, the first thing you're going to need to do is the update on your Goggles 3, your FPV Remote Version 3, if you're going to use it, as well as your O3 ear unit. Now, to do this, you should use the DJI Assistant for Consumer Drones. Make sure you have downloaded the latest one, and then when you connect each of the devices via USB, it will pop up and offer you the new firmware. It'll take a few minutes to update, and once you've updated it, you will be able to bind your O3 ear unit to the Goggles 3. Now, with regards to O3 on the Goggles 3, there are a few things you need to be aware of. This combination only works with the new DJI FPV Remote version 3. Just like when DJI added support for the Avata 2 on the Goggles 2, you cannot mix and match generations. So, for instance, when using O3 ear unit with the Goggles 3, if you want to use DJI's remote solution, you have to use the FPV Remote version 3. If you're going to use the O3 ear unit on the Goggles Goggles 2 or Integra, you continue to need to use the FPV Remote Version 2. What you cannot do is use FPV Remote Version 2 in combination with the Goggles 3. It's Remote 3, Goggles 3, Remote 2, Goggles 2 and Integra. Now, I've done all of the usual tests and I can confirm everything is working as expected. The ham file is not required to allow you to see the manual channel selection mode on O3, but in the normal mode without ham, you will only have one channel available in 40 megahertz or three channels available in 20, and you will not have the full RF power if you're in a CE region. I can confirm though, the ham file still does everything that it did before. If you use the ham file in the CE region, it will not only unlock the additional channels, but will also give you full FCC power as well, and I have confirmed that here on the Spectrum Analyzer. Now, with regards to support for ear units, at this moment in time, it is only for the O3 ear unit on the Goggles 3. This firmware does not add support for the original ear unit or the Vista when used with the Goggles 3. You can use those original ear units with the Goggles 2 and Integra on that last firmware version, but that is not compatible with the Goggles 3 today. To be perfectly honest, I don't expect to see DJI bring support for the ear unit in Vista to these goggles. I think O3 is as far back as it goes. Now, with regards to the low power behavior, that is exactly the same as it was before. Low power mode still doesn't offer full RF output when turned off on the system. To get full RF power from this system, you do need to receive an arming command over MSP. But what I can confirm works is all of the other Goggles 3 functionality. So like you could on the Avata 2, you can wirelessly stream your video from your goggles to your smartphone via the DJI Fly app when you used with the O3 ear unit just like you could whilst used with the DJI Avata 2. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with regards to this remote controller, this is the only one compatible with the Goggles 3, which is the Vision 3, as you can tell from the antennas. It does still work the same as it did with the Avata 2, which means this remote does not communicate with the ear unit itself. The remote 
communicates with the goggles and the goggles forward that communication over the ear to the O3 ear unit. As a result of that, if you are to lose power or signal on the goggles, you are also going to lose signal on your remote controller as well. My personal advice has always been not to use the DJI remote solution. You are far better using your own standalone remote solution, something like Express LRS, Crossfire, whatever system you want, but having a standalone remote is by far the safest way forward. Now, you'd have noticed in that first bit of the video I was talking about today because that was recorded yesterday when the firmware released. I intended to actually release this video on day of release. However, I came across a stumbling block and that was my latency testing. Now, this is the worst part of the testing. It is a long, drawn out and difficult process. And my initial plan was just to make sure everything looked the same, most importantly in the low latency modes. Worth me reminding you again that the lowest latency modes on O3 is dependent on your goggles refresh rate. You have to match the frame rate to the refresh rate of the goggle. So for instance, when using O3 on the V2s, you set it to 120 frames a second. That is the lowest latency. But when using O3 on the goggles 2, the Integra or the goggles 3, the lowest latency mode is 100 frames a second. 30, 50, 60 and 120 modes are not the lowest latency. It is only the 100 frames a second mode that is. So the plan was to do some quick latency tests, mostly in the low latency mode to confirm it all looked the same. Unfortunately, it didn't. And my tests found that when checking the O3 on the goggles 3 in 100 frames a second low latency mode, doesn't matter if it was 4K, 2.7K or 1080p, it was showing about a five millisecond increase in latency. This is an increase on the first pixel latency as well as the full frame, but the first pixel increased from 26 milliseconds in my previous tests to 31 milliseconds today. What is also bizarre about this is I then went and tested that same O3 ear unit with the new firmware on my goggles too, and I was seeing exactly the same, 31 milliseconds, a five millisecond increase over the tests that I did myself on the channel about six months ago. Now I have gone and double checked some older O3 ear units on these goggles as well. I've downloaded the firmware on these goggles, downgraded I should say, and I've done a whole suite of testing and I can confirm that I cannot get that 26 milliseconds number again at the moment. There's no test that I've done in the last 24 hours that has given me the 26 milliseconds of low latency to the first pixel. I have also checked the O3 unit on the V2 goggles, and that all looks fine. That looks exactly as it did in the past. No problems at all. I'm a bit confused, and I don't fully understand what is going on. What I can say is, right now, the latency with the O3 unit on the goggles 2 is the same as the goggles 3, but that does appear to be about 5 milliseconds higher than it was when I tested it about 6 months ago and I have no idea why. Now, my only conclusion at this point is that somewhere along the line, DJI may have increased the latency in firmware on either the O3 ear unit or the goggles 2, and obviously then on the goggles 3 as it gets support. I can't though confirm this. I've tried downgrading these goggles a few versions. I've tried downgrading the O3 ear units a few versions, and I still can't get to that 26 milliseconds of latency number that I got on these tests last year. I know those tests were correct. I actually have the footage from them and I've gone back and checked the footage. So right now, I'm only left with the conclusion that DJI somewhere have ended up increasing the latency a little bit. What that means for you is, well, as far as I can tell, the latency on the newest firmware has been this 31 milliseconds to first pixel. You've been flying with it anyway, so, all I'm going to say right now is basically the latency is the same between these two goggles and I'm going to have to do a lot more digging to try and understand what the hell is going on because genuinely this has driven me nuts since I found this yet the fact remains that I'm not getting the same numbers I did in the past. So that's it on latency for now. Overall, that pretty much is the situation today. So to summarize, Goggles 3 gets support for the O3 ear unit, not the DJI Caddx Vista or the original ear unit, only the O3. 
It works with the Goggles 3 with the DJI Remote 3 if you want to use their remote solution, which is this one here. You don't have to. I don't advise you do. You cannot cross and match. So you cannot use Goggles 3 with FPV Remote Version 2 on the O3. You cannot use Goggles 2 with FPV Remote Version 3 on the O3. Remember, if you are going to use this remote, it doesn't communicate with the ear unit. It communicates with the goggles and the goggles transmit to the ear unit. As a result of that, if you were to lose signal on the goggles, you will also lose remote control. And again, that's the reason I don't recommend you do it. I have done a quick flight and I've done some initial testing and I'm not seeing any issues. I'm not seeing any main problems. Overall, you have O3 on the goggles 3 as you had O3 on the goggles 2 in the past. Now, I hope you found this video interesting. If you have, please do let me know what you think down below. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content in the future, please consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to make content in the future, please do consider checking it out. I will be releasing more latency testing because it looks like I need to go back and do it all again because something has changed. Um, I don't know why. The, method, the testing method is the same. Literally nothing has changed, yet I can't get the numbers on the Goggles 2 or Goggles 3, yet I can get the numbers on the Goggles V2, which tells me something has changed. What that really means for you, will you notice? Not really, probably. Who knows? Anyway, that's it for me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.